Hello, Akron fans, and welcome to this exhibition match cast. This is going to be a match between Mongooky and Cybernetic Pony, who, if you've been watching my cast for the last couple weeks, should be familiar names. They'll be on Cold Forge, so let's get started. Mongooky is starting out in the northwest corner of the map, while Cybernetic Pony is starting out in the southeast corner of the map, and neither player has chosen their species yet, though, historically speaking, Cybernetic Pony tends to go for CISO, and Mongooky. Oh! Or Grackham. And Monkey will always go for Vekir. And there he is going for Vekir, as expected. So Monkey is going to be building up probably. Oh, actually, to point out, this is a slightly changed version of Cold Forged. It's, as you can see, got some little hills behind the resources. And I don't believe I've casted this version before, but the resources are considerably more limited. You can't easily place your RPs around the crates as you used to be able to. I believe I may have casted this one once, but I figure I might as well go over it once again, just to be sure. Just in case people haven't seen it. Anyway, so Monkey probably going to be going for let's see, his normal style. On this map, he probably I wouldn't be surprised if he did go for a depot rush, but I think he might just go over his normal style of running up to his opponent and laying down foundations. And it looks like he does have at least is that a Shin Viewer being ordered to do that? Yes, a Shin and Teth Viewer are being ordered into Cybernetic Pony's base. Cybernetic Pony is about two minutes up from there. He is going very economically focused, getting an Arcticus up right in the path that he expects Monkuki to come through, or at least, well, I guess he must expect Monkuki to come through there. And if Monkuki does, it will work out very nicely. If Monkuki doesn't, which Monkuki actually was planning to, but if he doesn't, if he decides to go around this side, then it won't work quite so well. I can see why Cybernetic Pony did this. Cybernetic Pony is clearly trying to have an Arcticus protecting his main expansion and not worrying too much about its back expansion, though you can get at least infantry up here. I think vehicles can go all the way through, but infantry definitely can go all the way through and down. Anyway, Monkuki is being spotted. Cybernetic Pony was right in putting his Arcticus where he put it, though Monkuki could very well change up his plans. It's a bit risky if he does, though, because Cybernetic Pony might expect that Monkuki is just coming along the other side. If Cybernetic Pony has played Monkuki any amount of time, and he certainly has, he's going to know Monkuki likes to do foundation rushes and is very likely to do one now. In fact, Monkuki has not really invested much in his main base. He's getting some RPs, but granted, we're jumping back to the 32 second mark where he's actually setting up orders rather than back at the two minute mark or so where he was just checking to see if Cybernetic Pony was being hit and what Cybernetic Pony was up to. Now, Cybernetic Pony is at the two minute mark. He is seeing this attack come in. He does have an Octo set up, a couple of Octos set up to deal with this attack as it comes in, since he's assuming that they will not forever be distracted by the Arcticus, which is a good assumption to have. Monkuki, on the other hand, jumping back to the 226 mark, he's two minutes up from when we last saw him, and he is doing exactly that. He is moving past the Arcticus, but still attacking it, actually. He's not decided to go after any of the Octos here that he may want to go after, instead consider considering the Arcticus as his top priority. There we go, now he's going past it, and this is going to be a bit risky, because Monkuki has not started to set up foundations, and he probably needs to. Or he needs to go around here, and then just this area here, well up here, down to this ramp on the northwest side of Cybernetic Pony's base. That's likely to be his best bet, and we are looking at Monkey's point of view. He has jumped back about two minutes from where he, when he was, and he is not changing up his orders. He's actually continuing along the same path he has already laid out. He does have a Zion Beer going up to the north, the really high up base, which Cybernetic Pony on his end has not gone for. He is starting to go for it now, but he hadn't initially gone for it. His Arcticus is not protecting it. He has nothing really protecting it. And some Seppis and Faros being set up to defend against the Shin and Teth Veers. Monkuki back at the 252 mark. About a minute down from there, he is getting quite a bit of damage from that attack. He is not succeeding at all, not being able to set up foundations. On this map, foundations could work here. Inside the main base is a little bit riskier, but it could still work out. It's just, it would kind of require you go behind or go around. And it can work, it's just that, as you can see, there isn't a whole lot of room for foundations in this section here. You have to go back over to between these ramps, and that's difficult to get to if you're going straight. You can't go straight through their base, you have to go around the back. Or you can go up to this top section, and hope they build this expansion, and haven't already gotten wise to your plans, which Cybernetic Pony clearly has. Now, half a minute down from here, Monkuki is focused at the... Actually, he just jumped back a bit. So at a minute down, rather, he's focused at 348 mark. He is... A Wait, we're not looking at Monkey at all. We're now looking at Monkey at the 240 mark, a minute down from where Cybernetic Pony was, and he is continuing to expand. He is continuing to go along with his original plan, too. He has not echoed this out at all. I'm rather surprised. He also hasn't started to set up foundations to support his assault. He's not that committed to this, and Cybernetic Pony apparently 
realizes, or no, it looks like he realizes this and he's just avoiding it entirely, letting him just waste, letting Monkuki waste time attacking the Arcticus. And Monkuki looks like he will be retreating. Yep, there he goes. He is getting out of the way, probably going to be setting up foundations a bit further back. He is not retreating very far, as you can see. He's merely retreating far enough that he's not going to hit the Arcticus and not going to be seen by it. Both players are very tensely trying to figure out what the other is going to be doing at this front here in the southeast side of the map. Now, on the northwest side of the map, we see that Monkuki is definitely focused on getting a bit more economy. This is definitely a cover plan. He has no building so far, no foundations, nothing of that sort. He's just building up resource processors, jumping back to the pass when he needs to, which is a little bit unwise. He's using, he is using a lot of chrono energy to build this up. Now, granted, it does mean that it's a little bit harder for Saturday Pony to counter, but I still stand by what I say, macro in the present, micro in the past. You have far less of a chrono energy expenditure dealing with the stuff nearer to the present, and you can just tweak it as you need to. I can kind of see why Monkuki is doing this, because he's he is doing a fairly risky strategy. He is pushing very much forward without leaving a whole lot in his base. He's just focusing entirely on distracting Cybernetic Pony so that Cybernetic Pony doesn't even think to attack his main base. Rather than building up early defenses, I mean, it's the 350 mark and he's now building a depot. But he has a very healthy economy to back it up. I mean, 6 LCRPs, 2 KPRPs at 4 minutes into the game is not bad. Cybernetic Pony, on the other hand, is... A little bit behind on that. He has 5 LC, actually 6 LC, and is just now getting 2 QP. Just now starting on this crate. But that's at the 522 mark. So he is actually behind economically compared to Cybernetic Pony. And he's also making sure to open up some gates or getting rid of these Inceptors on the center of the map so we can get through without any issue. Or fewer issues. Make a smaller path here. And he is going to be taking advantage of this. Moving his Faros into Mon Cookie's base. Mon Cookie about... Five seconds down from where Cybernetic Pony was, and jumping back at about 30 seconds, he's probably fully aware of this being destroyed. He's aware of the Spire being destroyed because he had vision on that, but he didn't have vision on the Inceptor here. That's perfectly neutral. There's no one, no shared vision. In case you haven't seen Cold Forge before, one of the big gimmicks of this map, well, not so much gimmicks of this map, but one of the things this map takes advantage of is that you can have allied units that aren't either player. And... Distracting from that, but Cybernetic Pony is dealing quite a bit of damage further in the future. He's not likely to necessarily make this stick because these vehicles are coming up. There will be, well, actually air vehicles coming up for Monkuki. Anyway, as I was saying, Cold Forge is a map that, if you haven't seen before, has a lot of allied units that share vision. And there's teleporters and domes over in the southwest corner and northeast. Actually, the teleporters and chronoporters share the vision, the domes don't. There's this huge amount of Arctikai reefs and domes in the center of the map, though once again, I don't believe the domes actually share vision. And there's the Spires, one of which has been destroyed along the west and east side of the map. All of these are, well, at least the side ones. The middle ones are basically indestructible, but the side ones are quite weak. If you destroy them, you eliminate your opponent's vision of various swaths of the map, but it doesn't completely eliminate it. There's also these comm hub, or observation hubs here, which used to be allied vision, but comm hubs kind of have too big of a vision radius to make that useful. There are some plans to make that a scripted thing where you go near and it becomes a full obs hub. That actually be really cool. But right now, this area is not viewable. But yeah, overall, this game has a lot of... Or this level has a lot of vision to it. This game normally doesn't have as much vision to it, but this particular level has it in spades. And as we can see, more examples of vision. Monkuki setting up a comm hub right next to Cybernetic Pony's base. Very good idea. I always encourage the use of comm hubs because they are wonderful scouting tools. And as we can see, Monkuki, this is the second pass on that attack we saw at the Faros earlier, and it is not working out this time around. Cybernetic Pony can't really do anything. Cybernetic Pony, on the other hand, the 636 mark, he is getting himself air units of his own, or at least advanced structures. He will be able to get air units from there. And then from that, he will be likely building some air units. And the Shinveer here is scouting out, sacrificing his life for useful information. That useful information being that reefs are being built up here and Octopod has been constructed. Not really all that much useful information, actually. He doesn't really know necessarily that Cybernetic Pony is going for advanced structures, though we can probably infer that. I mean, Cybernetic Pony is definitely going for something. And Grekum normally has advanced structures around this time. Normally gets a Spire around this time. And there it is. Cybernetic Pony does have that Spire, so we are set for that one. And he's also going to find that Monkuki has a comm hub set up. And this comm hub... Well, this is about a minute down from where Cybernetic Pony was looking, so it's not going to be damaged yet, but Cybernetic Pony is well aware that this exists, or very soon will be. Monkuki is also well aware of what exists in Cybernetic Pony's expansion, but not his main base. He's not aware of the Spire, though he can probably suspect it, and 
Running a Shinveer to its death into the domes, not a good idea. I'm not sure what he intended to do with that. Possibly lure Cybernetic Pony Sparrows into those domes as well. But I think Cybernetic Pony is going to possibly deal with that? Actually, I'm not sure. Looks like he lost them. Yep, looks like they are running into the domes. Cybernetic Pony aware of this and not able to get them out of the way in time. He will need to retreat those Faros out of the way. And he's doing exactly that. That is burning up quite a lot of Chrono Energy, actually. N I don't know if Monkuki was intending to waste Cybernetic Pony's Chrono Energy by forcing him to retreat those Faros and luring them into the dome at the cost of his own life. Or at the cost of life is Shinbeer. But that was still pretty clever, nonetheless. And this Tesbeer over here, valiantly, but not that effectively, trying to fight off the Octo, which is going to take care of this Calm Hub pretty quickly. Now, Monkuki back to the 75 mark. He might retreat this Tesbeer to get out of the way. He might move this Calm Hub as well. Hard to say, but he is definitely focused. No, he's going to defend it directly. Getting this Shin Turtle here to defend directly against the Octos that are coming up. Not a terrible idea, though. Cybernetic Pony should have Seppi Pods now, actually. Or within the next 20 seconds. Well, from the point, he jumped back about 40 sec or jumped back 20 seconds from when we were looking, so it's a little bit longer now, obviously. Monkuki, on the other hand, the 814 mark, actually, at the same time. Both players very near the unplayable past, and Cybernetic Pony actually out of Chrono Energy right now. Monkuki has two orders left, but... Using that to retreat his Shinbeer, which gets destroyed by the Faros here. That is pretty terrible timing. Yeah, the Shinbeer look looks like it will end up being taken out by these Faros. No, not quite. Getting Just getting away from the Faros, just getting out of there. This calm up, however, not quite in as good of a position. The Octopod can come up to deal with it and ultimately deal with the Teth Veer. Same time, the Faros are trying to attack Monkuki's base, but Monkuki able to deal with him, no problem. The Seppi Pod, on the other hand, is going to be an issue. And Monkuki is going to burn a lot of Chrono Energy trying to heal that up, with trying to heal the Shin Turchers up. He doesn't have any ten Teth Searchers in production. He really could use those, or just Teth Veer, honestly. But Teth Searchers, he can build more of them at the same time. No, instead of building Shin Halcyons, having gotten Halcyon class when we weren't looking. Not sure how effective that will be, and Cybernetic Pony definitely making his Seppi Pod worth it. And Monkuki trying his best to make sure that the Shin, Shin Turchers are gets inside before it dies. Still not that effective, unfortunately. But the Sepipod runs away. Sepipod Pony not jumping back to deal with that. He's probably assuming that the Sepipod did his job or at least survived. And no, it didn't really. Sepipod Pony is building up a lot of pod class, though. Not going for legal class, just sticking with pod class. And at this point, he is expanding pretty consistently. But Monkuki is actually ahead in terms of economy. We see Monkuki has... Well, these crates are two-thirds of the way out. But he has four LC crates, four LC in his main base, two in his expansions, about... 7 LC RPs, he has 5 QP RPs, Cybernetic Pony on the other hand, a minute up from where he is, has 7, no, 6, no, 7 LC RPs and 4 QP RPs. So, it's a slight advantage to Monkuki and Q Plasma, though Monkuki not taking the most advantage of it. He's primarily going for Shin Halcyons, which is a bit of a surprise. I've not seen Shin Halcyons used to a great extent in years. Like, no, I'm not, I am not kidding, that is not a... Exaggeration. I have not seen Shin Halcyons used in years. Or at least to any great extent. They were pretty popular about two years ago, but like, with an alpha and beta, but they really fell out of popularity when people just decided, you know what, Shin Turcher, Ted Turcher, that's all we need. But that is what's being gone for. And actually, Shin Halcyons, I believe, are a little bit overpriced for what they do. They aren't underpowered, so their price is a little bit high for what they can do. So they have to work a bit harder to make cost. On the other hand, they do have Nanites if you do have the specials tech researched. Monkuki does not. Monkuki is probably not going to go for that. No one really does anymore. But it is worth pointing out. Anyway, Monkuki at the 1229 mark having to fend off Cybernetic Pony's attacks and Cybernetic Pony... Oh, sorry, that wasn't Monkuki. That was Cybernetic Pony's point of view. Monkuki at the 1136 mark is going to be having to fend off this attack. Two Semipods, two Faropods. And he doesn't really have anything in his main base. His main, his main forces actually jumped into Cybernetic Pony's base and Cybernetic Pony had retreated his forces... Jumped back, retreated his forces, and is now fending off this attack in his main base. Monkuki trying to deal with it as best he can. If he can get rid of the Seppi Pods, he'll have some chance, but it's going to be very difficult. He's very careful trying to micromanage his way through this. And probably try to teleport his way through this. He doesn't have anything near a Chrono Porter. He has no Chrono Porters in existence, actually. He doesn't... He has the money for one. But barely. And getting Teth Halcyons as well, I don't know if I'd recommend that. Mostly because... While Teth Halcyons are a powerful unit, their biggest strength is their health bar. They actually are not that strong for their cost, but they are very, very tough. 
Your 420 health is actually quite high. Admittedly, it's not the highest health effect you have, but it is definitely a pretty high health unit. The Zion Halcyon, I believe, tops it at 600, but that's still really high health. So it's a great tank, but its attack power is roughly comparable to the Teth Pulsar, which is also about half its cost. If you look, the Teth Halcyon is 120.49, the Teth Pulsar is 89.22. So a little, little over half the cost, but still about the same attack power. The biggest difference is health. Something I think would be a good idea, though it's difficult to do on attack, is to have Teth Fear supported by Teth Halcyons. Possibly Teth Pulsar is supported by Teth Halcyons. The Teth Pulsars die and the Teth Fears pop out. At that point, you end up having the Teth Halcyons continuing to tank for the Teth Fear while the Teth Fear do all the damage. Because Teth Fear are the most cost effective damage dealers against air that Vector have, period. The only downside is they die really easily and they aren't particularly fast. But they have range and they have a lot of attack power. And they're quite cheap. However, I would say the best thing to do to get those is to get Teth Pulsars. And not sure what's going on here with Monkuki's forces. Apparently, trying to teleport something into a place it can't go. Well, let's get around that later. Anyway, Cybernetic Pony does is getting Chrono Pointing of his own, but he is behind by a couple minutes. Surprisingly enough, I would have expected him to have Chrono Pointing a bit sooner, but I suppose having to deal with his attacks might have slowed him down a bit. Anyway, once he gets that finished, he should be able to at least match Monkuki somewhat. The Monkuki having his gate tech. Having that sound glitch go away, thankfully, and having a fair amount of Q-Plasma, actually, he could start Corona Porting these units back and deal with, especially since there's all anti-air here, except for the Shin Halcyon, which is pretty much a generalist, he could pretty easily take care of everything that Monkuki has. Sorry, everything that Cybernetic Pony has, Monkuki could deal with. And Cybernetic Pony would have a much harder time, even if Cybernetic Pony does Corona Port back, Monkuki is prepared. He has all the units in place in the event of a Corona Ported attack, to this point in time. Now Monkuki on the other hand has gone for its Corona Port. 1227 mark, jumping in and will be able to take out all of, all of these units here provided they aren't that distracted but Cybernetic Pony cannot deal with this without a Corona Port of his own. Will he go for that? 1506 mark, he has Corona Porting, he's well aware of this attack, he could send in some units but it's going to be very difficult to do. His best bet is that the Teth, Teth Halcyons get distracted by the Reef and no that won't happen, the Teth Halcyons are not that easily distracted which is good for them but bad for Cybernetic Pony. Monkuki is going to be Dealing a lot of damage, assuming that the units actually get into place. But we'll see what happens with that. I don't think Samurai Pony is going to be threatened that directly. The Reef is taking a lot of the damage here. If he goes to try to stop them, it's going to be difficult. But I don't believe he is doing that exactly. Now, on the red time, we see that a stronger attack has come in. Monkuki has sent a corner port back. Samurai Pony checking out that point in time. And yes, they are, in fact, going to defend. And that defense is not working out. These tests. Halcyon's doing a wonderful job of dealing with the air units, which is exactly what they should do. In those numbers, the cost effectiveness question doesn't even really matter that much, because what matters is the fact that they can survive long enough to deal with that damage. And also the fact that there are fewer units, so it's less chrono energy cost to send them back in time and have them do stuff. Now, Mongoogie is going to have to deal with the fact that there has been a chrono port at Farapod. It's probably not going to be the biggest deal, but he will have to deal with that eventually. And Cybernetic Pony. Not sure really what he can do at this point, other than what he's... Well, actually, he's trying to go for some ground units and use those to attack. No, Oshpod's a good idea to use those. Definitely a good idea to get those in there. That's his best bet. Oshpod's and Faro's are going to be his best bet, though Oshpod's definitely a, a lower chrono energy cost to field. Now, this is why I'm a bit surprised that the Shin Halcyon was not fielded at this point. Mongoogie can still send back some other units to deal with this. He can still send back if he wants to, and he's fully aware of what's going on. He could send back some Shin Churches. He, actually, at this point... Shin Turtles would be a great idea. He could corner back the Shin Halcyon as well if he wanted to. He's not doing any of those things, mind you. He's focusing very much on this attack, making sure if he actually needs that or not. Which I'm pretty sure he will. Against the air units, like I said, not really a big deal, but against the ground units, it's a big problem. And actually, it looks like he's teleporting over these units. Okay, it looks like when he gets control in the playable pass, he's going to teleport these units over here, because these are the post Chrono Portis, a couple of them. This one here definitely is. It is the future version of this guy here. But that's, of course, assuming that she survives that long, and I don't know if that'll happen. It's really hard to tell. The green time will provide some truth, but even then it's going to be difficult. Going back on the green time, or what the green time was propagated, the 1446 mark, we see that the Teth Halcyons have survived somewhat. But, but Cybernetic Pony is still sending some Chronoported units back. Chronoporting is still going back for him. And Moncookie back in the play will pass 1726 mark, sending over some... 
Shin and Halcyons, but it's a bit too late. I'm, and Zion Halcyons as well, but once again, too late. He needs to have chronoported those guys back. Now, it looks like he might... I don't think he actually did. Might have stopped some of Cybernetic Ponies chronoporting. I don't think he did, though. Cybernetic Ponies chronoporting is way too close to the unplayable past for it to likely be an issue. It's probably going to be something that he has to deal with with slightly more subtle means. And that is going to be a very difficult thing to deal with, I suppose. I mean, if you think about it, Cybernetic Pony is going to have to worry about essentially having to, well, deal with the ground and air, anti-ground and anti-air forces. But Monkey, on the other hand, isn't really dealing a whole lot of damage. Most of his damage is being dealt closer to the present, or in the playable past. And the unplayable past is what really matters. I mean, he could still survive to have this attack deal a lot of damage. Cybernetic Pony is entirely focused on defense. But even then, it looks like a lot of that damage is being undone. You see the red bars here, which is Monkuki's damage, is actually getting undone by this assault. And yes, this defense... Well, this assault's getting undone. The defense is doing a great job. Monkuki, his only hope is to chronoport back these Zion Halcyons and have them deal some meaningful damage, but they aren't doing so. In fact, they aren't dealing any damage whatsoever, surprisingly enough. But that's what he needs to have them do, and they aren't doing that. So what we see right now is completely fake. It's not going to happen like this. This is absolutely wrong. What's actually going to happen is quite different. What's actually going to happen is going to be that Monkuki is basically going to set himself up considerably differently than what he has right now. I mean, what he has right now... These Zion Halcyons are a great thing to have. They actually are really good both anti-air and anti-ground. They're better anti-ground, but they are still good anti-air. But even with that, he needs to chronoport those back, and he's not doing so. He hasn't chronoported anything in the last five minutes. Cybernetic Pony has been, on the other hand, chronoporting things pretty constantly. And I understand, of course, that you need to go back to base, and sometimes he's teleporting, and Monkey might not want to do that. But on the other hand, he has a lot of chrono energy with which to do that. And he's getting his Zion Halcyons in a really bad spot. He needs to get them out of here. He needs to teleport those guys out of there. Halcyon class units should not die, if at all possible, and it's definitely possible to avoid them dying here. Zion Halcyon here trying to get out of the way, but no, not able to do so, and goes down completely. The other Zion Halcyon following suit. Monkuki not really able to deal with this, and it's rather unfortunate that, because it'd be really nice if he actually got those out of there. Halcyon class units cannot die. If you want to be at all cost effective, your Halcyon class units cannot die. If they die, you have wasted a ton of cash. So at this point, Cybernetic Pony has really taken the advantage. Mongui was being kind of careless with his chronoports, only sending one and only sending anti-air, not considering the fact that Cybernetic Pony is going to counter with Octopods or other mainly ground units. And that seems to have been the key mistake here. That's going to be an issue, and I don't know how Mongui is going to get out of that. I imagine that he's going to be able to get out of that if he just works on building more... I mean, he has a fairly healthy economy, though admittedly it's starting to fall behind. He's starting to... he's losing crates. In fact, his economy is becoming less and less healthy. He hasn't actually done much to deal with it. Spreading out right now, using a slipgate to great effect to spread out his RPs. Nicely done there, but even with that, it's hard to say. Cybernetic Pony just... also falling behind somewhat, but he's been a bit more consistent about expanding regularly. And that's important. If you don't expand regularly, you run out of resources, and Cybernetic Pony actually being very daring going across the map like this, that is, that's actually pretty big. So if he does that, that's going to be, I think that's going to seal it. Cybernetic Pony just needs to set up some units to attack with, and powerful enough units to attack with, and that'll be it. More attacks coming from Monkuki, and he does have, well, he has a slipgate, he has, he has the energy, he has the resources, the Q Plasma. I'm not sure what he's waiting for for another Chronoport, possibly more units. It wouldn't be a terrible idea, but right now, Cybernetic Pony, he just needs to build up more units and go for an attack. This would be a great time to attack, actually. Like two or three Sebi Pods and possibly... Yeah, getting Legal Class. There he is, Cybernetic Pony getting Legal Class at... Well, five seconds from now. At the 2130 mark or so. Getting Legal Class, and once that's done, he will be able to build some... Well, Octoligos at this point. And Octoligos would actually be the best bet. They would do a decent enough job against the Shin Halcyons. The Shin Halcyons here are going to take care of the Sepipod and Pharopod set. One of them's going to die, but the other one is going to finish off the Pharopod. Actually, no! Not even dead! Barely alive! Shin Halcyons are not something to be trifled with. If you have legal class units, it's a little bit easier, but right now, all that Mon all that Cybernetic Pony can build is Octoligos. Or those Octopods are kind of out of position, so he might actually pull those back in and build some Sepi or Pharo Legos. 
And for those of you who may remember, Sepi Legos used to be very terrifying. And with the economy as it is now, I could see them making a bit of a comeback. Not necessarily as powerful as they were before, that was just ridiculous before. This map design does not support that. But I could see, you know, a flock of about four or five Sepi Legos could still deal a lot of damage. Especially since Monkey isn't especially well prepared for it. He has no defensive structures, he has this one Teth Halcyon. But against Sepi Legos, that one Teth Halcyon will not do the trick. It just simply will not do the trick. And an Octopod is being built up, and it looks like Sepi Legos are the target unit. Cybernetic Pony not worried about Sepi Pod in this pod triad, only worried, or duo at this point, only worried about an Octopod. And the Sepi's here doing a much better job of getting rid of the Shin Halcyons, but this is after the Sepi Pods and Fire Pods were killed. So that's still not particularly cost effective. Now, of course, Sepi Sepi's are very much like Teth Beer, the most cost effective unit that Grekum has against anything to do with air. But even then, Mongui teleporting these guys out of the way, getting them completely out of harm's way, and nicely done too, though this this particular Shin Halcyon will not get out of harm's way. Mongui could save it, and he might actually do so, I'm not sure, but he did save that other one in the nick of time. And he is getting them out of the way, the Faropod cannot catch up to it. It's Teth Halcyon very cleverly jumping along to try to deal with that, but doesn't really matter. The Faropod kind of lost, and will have to run through the Teth Halcyon in order to get back home. But... As we can see, a chronoport has occurred. These Sepis are being chronoported back to deal with the Shin Halcyons. And once they come in and... Actually, hold on. I, I think that Seppi is in a bad spot to chronoport. I think he's going to end up chronofragging. And I think Cybernetic Pony has realized that too. Make sure chronoport's in the right spot this time. Avoiding a chronofrag. And killing off these Sep these Well, trying to kill off the Shin Halcyons. Once again, you Shin Halcyons are not to be trifled with. Like... Half a dozen Seppis would do fine, but a single Seppi will not. Very important to point out. One Seppi Ligo would probably do fine, but two are actually being built. Not bad. I still think, you know, getting four or five would be a really good idea. Just get four or five, rush into Monkuki's base, and finish him off. That would probably do the trick. We'll have to obviously see what happens with Cybernetic Pony does, finding out what he actually does ultimately to deal with this. But that would probably be pretty powerful. And... Looks like Faro Legos will be built fairly soon, possibly. A Sepipod has been built up. Not sure if for Faro Legos or just for defense. We'll find out very shortly. And it looks like... No, the Sepipod Legos are the main targets here. Seven Pony focusing on chronoporting those, and Monkuki not focusing on chronoporting anything. I'm actually really surprised at this. He's mainly using a Slipgate to teleport, getting in some small assault forces from time to time, but... He needs to mash Chronopore for Chronopore, this is his only real hope, and he has very little cube plasma with which to do it. A lot of Liquid Crystal, but these, at least one of these RPs should go over to this cube plasma crate here and start harvesting from that. Ultimately, at least two of them will, but he needs to get more on that, because really, cube plasma is what he needs to match with Cybernetic Pony. Right now, Cybernetic Pony, as we can see, is almost 450 cube plasma at the 25 minute mark, and even back when he's doing more Chronoports, he still has hundreds of Q-Plasma, he could easily chronoport like eight or nine units without too much trouble. As, well, maybe not Sepi Legos. Sepi Legos would be about four or five, but he could easily, yeah, 85 bursts. It's about about five or six he could chronoport at once, but that's more than enough. And as we can see, they do a number on the Shin Halcyons. And even taking, well, actually not even taking the damage. The Octopus is the one taking the damage from here. And the Sepi Legos are able to get rid of, especially with their chronoported double gangers, are able to get rid of the Shin Halcyons with no issues whatsoever. And the earlier version is not taking any damage either. Very nicely done. So Cybernetic Pony is basically on the winning road. He has got very little left that could actually stop him. Monkuki really hasn't been focusing enough on his economy. A lot on his, on his Liquid Crystal. If he builds a bunch of Q Plasma RPs around the map, he could actually make a comeback here, build enough units just to deal with the Sepi Legos, and then Chronoport back, and then finish off with a good combination of ground and air finish off Cybernetic Pony's entire base. That would work very well. However, I don't think Monkuki is doing that. In fact, I think Monkuki is probably too far back in the past and has too little chrono energy in order to be able to pull this off. Which is unfortunate, because... If he could do that, he could jump that back in and just deal with everything in the playable past. Both players are focused on the unplayable past. The 25 minute mark here, Cybernetic Pony is focused on, and we don't see the Sepi Legos being chronoported back. Apparently, the chronoport loop has been completed, but we do not see them chronoporting back here. This is actually kind of surprising. I'm going to speed this up slightly, because it is taking a little bit. Now, Teth 
nice to know Ted Halcyon is being built. A lot of Ted Halcyon is being built from Mon Kuki, and it looks like he is planning to do some Chrono Ports here. Congregating them all around the Slipgate. Possibly going for another big Chrono Port rush, but it's going to be a lot harder this time around, given that he has... Oh! There we go! A Chrono Port has been set out, and it looks like... That is Mon Kuki's Chrono Port, though unfortunately for him, not enough Q Plasma only being able to Chrono Port two of those Teth Halcyons instead of all of them. Which is really unfortunate, and he can't actually get rid of this Fire Pot either, he can't detect it, it's cloaked right now. No Shin Churchers nearby, no Shin Churchers at all in the map actually. And at the 28-22 mark, a major Fire League attack coming in for Cybernetic Pony. It's gonna be able to do quite a bit of damage, but... Red Time of Year carrying the Chrono Port that came back for Mon Kuki and... Cybernetic Pony also sending back a Chrono Port of his own, probably those Faro Ligos. Yep, these Faro Ligos are very likely the ones that will be going back in time. And once that happens, I don't think Mon Kuki stands a chance. He does have some Teth Turches here that could get rid of the Faro Ligos before they deal too much damage. But even then, it's going to be a big problem. And I think we see here, yep, those are the Faro Ligos that Chrono Ported back. And Mon Kuki doesn't have a whole lot of forces in the past to deal with this. Teth Halcyons, however, are coming up. And they are actually taking care of the Far, far League as well enough. That's pretty good. However, while that is a fairly cost-effective way of dealing with this attack coming in, it's still something that Cybernetic Pony can just actually, he's going to run away from. Not even going to bother with the Chrono Port or with the main attack, but definitely not the Chrono Port. Just getting out of there. And that'll work perfectly. And given that he's Reefs are allied, he can actually heal up as, go, as he's going through, which is very nicely done. And getting weapons, I think he's going to go for a Chrono Bomb. He might go for a Plasma Cruise Missile, but that's not likely. Most players don't. Most players go for a Chrono Bomb when they have the chance. So I think that that's going to be what he's going to do. Probably Chrono Bomb, a bunch of this base, and then rush in. Deal with the Teth Halcyons and all that. Maybe... Well, actually, right now, it's hard to say. There are no Teth Halcyons in the, in the base at all. Cybernetic Pony has nothing to worry about. Where are those Teth Halcyons? Well, it's two over here, and I think there were some further in the past that Mon Kuki had, tele had Chrono Ported. Ah, there they are. So Monkuki has them spread out quite a lot, in fact. I don't see how that... Oh, never mind. The Red Time Wave looks like it is going to have a bunch of them near Monkuki's main base. So Chrono Bombing that would be a good idea, just to set up nicely. However, I... I haven't seen that happen yet. And there we go. There is a weapon. It is, in fact, a Chrono Bomb! A Chrono Bomb has been set out, and it is going to cause... Well, that was bizarre. It's going to be a double Chrono Ported. Well, anyway. A Chrono Bomb has been sent out, and it will be... Well, we'll be taking out half of this base, shunting it into the future, and stopping it from being able to defend against any attacks that happen to come into the past at that point in time. We'll see if that's relevant, though, because Cybernetic Pony doesn't appear to be following up. He's focusing much more on defense of his own base. This will be quite successful. He's not actually going to lose anything to this. Although he might lose this... No, he's going to lose this, Sebi Ligo. And there goes that half of the base into the future. And Cybernetic Pony needs to follow up. It looks like... Back to the 30-34 mark, he is doing exactly that. He is moving into follow-up, and Mon Kuki at the 30-21 mark before this happens does see the Chrono Port happen, and that is going to be fairly powerful. There we go. There's Cybernetic Pony's follow-up. One of the Sepi Ligos is going down to the Teth Halcyon. The Faro Ligos are the main asset that Cybernetic Pony has in dealing with this and taking care of the Teth Halcyons. He's already divided, just needs to conquer, and once he's done that, well, he'll have conquered. He'll, he'll win. That's kind of the definition of conquering. So he'll have taken over this entire section of the map, and he can claim it for himself. Or for the country of his choice. Probably England. He is British. So I'm going to assume he's going to claim this land for England. But... That's also, with the Chrono Port coming in here, just to seal the deal, make sure he gets rid of these units before they get Chrono Actually, I'm not sure why he did that. That was kind of silly, in fact. Gets rid of one Teth Halcyon at the cost of all three of his Faro Ligos. I don't totally agree with that. Because he already had done the Divide and Conquer part. Just needed to have, be set up, get rid of this foundation so there's less healing going on. And then the other buildings come in and you can just take care of them. No real issue, honestly. Anyway, we're, we are seeing from Monkuki's point of view, and Summoning Pony has his point of view. He had already Chrono Ported back, which he might not do. And no, he's going to Chrono Port back right as the Chrono Bomb units come into play and get Chrono Fried in themselves. Okay, that's weird. Why? That's very bizarre. They should not have Chrono Fried themselves. I believe this is the second iteration. That If there is a weird Chrono Port like that, it should echo out, but it isn't. 
yeah, something really bizarre just happened. So right now, Cybernetic Pony could win. Because something really weird happened. Instead of chronoporting back and trying to deal with these units further back in time. I'm not sure, like I said, why he chronoported like that. I can kind of think he was probably trying to seal the deal, but still... That... That's kind of unfortunate. So Monkuki is basically about to get his base completely overrun. Everything here has 1 HP due to the fact that it chronofragged itself. And that... That's an anticlimactic end. I kind of wish it was a bit less anticlimactic, but unfortunately that is. And Cyber Knight Pony is pretty sure that's only the one instance, but he's wrong. Unfortunately, it appears that, according to the timeline, there is in fact two chronoports that happen one after the other for some bizarre reason. And it looks like Monkuki trying to make up for this, building some foundations to heal this up, to make sure that he doesn't lose this. And actually, chronoporting back his units here to try to take care of this before... Well, it doesn't really matter. Cyber Knight Pony had chronoport back his army... He had an army over here at this point in time, or roughly, well, further back. So you can see the chronoport happens at the 3415 mark, and Monkey is looking back right as his chronoport arrives at 3117 mark, or 3125 mark or so. And when that arrives, right after his own chronoport too, that's going to finish him off. Nice try with the chronoport, but unfortunately he did not quite win the Chrono Shenanigans War. And that is pretty much going to finish it. And that's the Chrono Frag. Like I said, this is bizarrely stable. I don't know what happened there. But no real chance for the Foundation to heal this up. And that's basically game. So Cybernetic Pony... Although, for some reason, isn't able to attack reliably. What the heck is going on? I don't know why these units aren't attacking. This is actually really bizarre. Cybernetic Pony, his point of view at the 35 minute mark, he thinks he's won. And yeah, he pretty much has. But... This is just getting weird. This is getting really weird, but it looks like, yep, Cyber Knight Pony ultimately able to re-attack, and there's that Chrono Bomb once again, very last time seeing it, and Monkey confirming that, yes, it is in fact a bizarre double Chrono Port. Very weird. So Cyber Knight Pony essentially has won this game. By some weird Chrono Frag bug, but still, he has won this game. Pretty much. She just needs to actually seal the deal, finish off this base. And he probably will, ultimately. Monkuki, from his point of view, does see the units coming in that are finishing off. So the Teth Viewer are doing a great job of stopping them, or at least slowing them down. And it looks like, ultimately, they were able to slow them down despite all the Chrono Frags. The Teth Viewer have done their job. As I said, they are the best anti-air unit Vekir has for cost. Now, when you get them for free, when a Teth Vehicle dies, it's wonderful. Though, still kind of tell, this is when, ultimately, the... The Chronoport units fight each other at 3157 mark, and it looks like they are all becoming Veers, and the Veers are doing a pretty decent job of getting rid of these units here. But on this iteration, it will not be so. No, unfortunately, the Veers are not able to finish it off. One iteration, and that was all he had. Still... Still quite powerful, but yeah, legal class units like that, kind of hard to deal with unless you have a couple dozen Teth Veer. Not at all impossible to get at that point, just not what Mon Cookie had. That's basically the game. I don't see anything that can really be done other than what we've seen. So, oh wait, Teth, Teth Halcyon is trying to come in to deal with Cybernetic Pony's base, but Mon Cookie has lost this. He has a Zion Veer, he has no Shin Veer, so he has the Teth Halcyons, but lack of Shin Veer is the end of him. He simply can't rebuild anything. So yeah, that is game. So running point is just running around, doing a bit of cleanup. Make sure he knows what's going on while the two players chat it up. And that, I think I'm going to stop it here. So, since, yeah, the destruction has pretty much fallen off the end of the time timeline, I think I'm just going to call it. And Monkuki going for one last ditch attempt to deal some damage, try to get rid of Cybernetic Pony's base. He won't be able to do so, but it's a valiant effort nonetheless. Those last few Teth Halcyon... It really won't matter, though. It it really won't. This one teleporting back at half health. The other one taking quite a bit of damage and will still teleport back as well. 37 mark, 37 40 mark, and it's down. So yeah, both players are just really confused about this whole weird issue. So given that Monk, he has basically lost the game, I'm going to call this. I hope you enjoyed that, and I will be back shortly with another considerably shorter match. 
Stay tuned.